from the combined crew of blindandroidusers.com and accessibleandroid.com, it's time for your favorite Android podcast. Kick back now and enjoy another fine episode from these fanboys and gals as they navigate Android from a blindness perspective. And now, here's your crew. Hello, I'm Ed Green, and welcome to episode 148 of the Blind Android Users Podcast. I'm joined this week by Warren Carr, Austin Pinto, Fee Dunn, John Dyer, Sally Kunders, and Doug Cameron. And we're coming to you on Saturday, the 7th of October, 2023. It's a big episode this week, folks. First, we have our announcement section, but then we're going to turn our Android basic sections over to uh, the release of the new Pixel phones, the 8 and the 8 Pro, and Android 14. So here we are. How are you, Dugaboo? Long time no see. Uh, You know, I'm not too, too bad. For once, I'm not sick and not exhausted. So, I mean, hey, that's a bonus, right? Yeah, I guess. Glad to hear that. Uh, iPhone, how are you? Um, yeah, not bad, thanks. Uh, I had COVID. I, well, I went away for a weekend, and then while I was away, I think I caught COVID. So um, <clears throat> still a little bit croaky, but much, much better. Uh, I also got a new toy the other week. I got an ice a countertop ice maker, and I'm loving oh. that. Um what does that do then? I mean, it makes ice, obviously. It makes like, ice on the but top like, of the how, how, Yeah, but like, why? Wh- how does it do it when it's not in the freezer? Is it? Uh... Um, it's got some prongs, and the water freezes around them, so it can make nine ice cubes in less than ten minutes, and then more, and then more, and more, and they you put water in the bottom, and then the ice cubes or ice round pieces land in the basket above. Um, and it's great because it's much. But it's not. It's not freezer. speedy. Though. It's not like a coffee maker. Like it, it can't freeze instantly. I guess that would be uh, liquid nitrogen. So not. Yeah, I don't think I'd want that. that. But it's a lot no. quicker than freezing water in a freezer that takes hours, though. Yeah, fair. I mean, fair within enough. an hour, you can make. Wait a minute. Six tens. Six. Say. Say you can make. I think it's in six minutes. You can make nine smaller ones. So that would be 90 ice pieces in an hour, which is not bad. So yeah, if people fair. are coming round, you could you just turn it on a bit before they start arriving, you know. You and, can have um, a litre of gin and tonic in that amount of time. Uh, you, you could. You could. Uh, I'm not sure what state you'd be in after that, but you could. <laughs> well, you should um, find out. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah, invite me round to find out and I'll pull your cheeks. Yeah, you're not coming. I believe that would be what you call sloppy. <laughs> yeah, we can uh, without without finding finding out you can't know what's really be. And Austin, how are you now that you've picked up the talking stick? I'm doing good. I'm outside my house now. I'm in my sister's house, so I'm sounding maybe I don't know how in a different mic. And the World Cup has started, so interesting interested about that. And uh, things are good. The rain is gone, so it's not my favorite season. It's the heat season now again, and I hope the winter arrives very fast. Yeah, you sound like you're broadcasting on location, really, in a remote windswept desert, but uh, we can go yeah. with it. And uh, at, at least you can see clearly now the rain has gone, I guess. That's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, I can. But it's you very, can. it is cool here, but in my house it is very hot. Yeah. Excellent. So is it hotter in the UK, do you think, than it is in India? I mean, we had a top temperature of 24 degrees Celsius today, which was very lovely. I was sitting in the garden wearing shorts and a T-shirt, which is a bit weird in October. Not much hot. We have a temperature of around 27, 28, so not much hot. Oh, so you are a bit warmer then, a bit warmer yeah. than ours. Yeah. And very humid. So oh. that makes it very warm. Yeah, it's a bit oppressive, isn't it, when you got the humidity like that? And then I went, I went to the sea today, so it was nice and refreshing. You hear the sound of the beach, sea water, and all those. Nice. That was wave rather than MP3, then. Yeah. 
Because uh, MP3C would have been compressed, whereas Waves MP3C is... would uh, have been compressed, yeah. Waves whereas wa compressed. Waves is uh, normal, isn't it? And compressed, yeah. Ed, mm -hmm. if you don't stop, I might give you some flack. Yeah. Like it, like it. And then I can give you some M40. <laughs> And to save us from ourselves, how are you, Sally, in Samsung's fair city? I'm doing well. Uh, the temperature is like 22 degrees Celsius here, and it's getting colder slowly. And I think in a few days I'm getting cold because my brother visited me a few days ago and he was sneezing all day long. So I'm sure I'm getting something from him. <laughs> oh, no. Did yeah. you put his Yanak? Yes. Good. I hope you did. Yeah. You should have definitely. And how are you? Yannack. I'm well, thank you. Yeah, I, uh, I I I poured some Yanak last Saturday. I went into the uh, Turkish restaurant we go to, shouted Yanak, and the waiter shouted Yanak, and we pulled each other's cheeks, which is always good. Uh, where should we go now, John Boy? How are you? I'm doing good. Um, I. Unfortunately, I have to report I'm still living in the Stone Age because I make my ice by filling water in trays and sticking them in my freezer. Uh, well, that's a bit silly. I think I want a proper ice machine that is somehow plumbed in and makes ice. The things we don't have in UK hotels, but the US does have. Um, like we literally don't do this. But in the US, ever, ever since I've been going there, like since in the 90s, they've got these ice machines on the floor. Uh, I've never seen this anywhere in the UK. I think we need those, however they work. Yeah, I wonder if it's similar, but the difference is that the water comes in through a pipe rather than you having to pour it in from the top. Well, they're um, frozen all the time. So, so like you can get freezers that do it, um, mm. or fridges, sorry, and, and they have buttons on them. So yeah. like, it's, it's like the surface top machines. I'm not sure how they work. But yeah, yeah, it's a bit similar to that. I was quite fascinated. I used to play with it. I just make it make loads of ice cubes, even though I didn't need ice cubes. Oh, I love them. I, lo I love it. But um, yeah, I mean, yeah. I've only got a shelf and a half in my freezer. So yeah. um, so it's nice to have these and I can just use them, you know, switch it on, use them straight away. And, um, well, they, they, they presumably Dobby is happy if you happy if you spoonerize it because then you have an elf and a shaft. So in India we have two, we have two ways. Oh. We have one is in the freezer and one we can have it separate. And then you have a line of water coming in through the tap and all. And then you can make lots of ice. You just press a button and you can get a tray load of ice out. Yeah, ah, interesting. And you, oh, you, you get you get a you get a scoop with it. You, um, do you remember pick and mix in Woolworth said where you mm -hmm. had those little? It was like a little sh mini shovel mm -hmm. that you could scoop out the sweets with. Then you get one of those with it as well to shovel the ice into your drinks. Saves using the fingers. Yeah, it's uh, it's very good. And how are you, Warren? Last but not least. I'm doing well, and since you play with those ice makers, uh, Ed, I probably shouldn't be having you in my house anytime soon because our fridge has a you know ice maker. You know, one side you know has an ice maker, so all you have to do is just press the button, and here comes the ice. And you could choose to have it crushed or whatever um, shape you want it. Uh, you want to make a slurpee or whatever, you can do that too. So it has like three different settings on it and uh, i mean it's huge i mean the uh it's probably maybe like a five gallon thing in there in the in the freezer above the uh wow you know so this ice all the time and it, it's just nice kids love it i, I don't care much but i'm doing well so and good This is the announcement segment of Blind Android Users Podcast. Stay tuned to hear important information regarding the podcast, surveys, and the latest news. Uh, do you have any announcement, Austin? I think I think we've got a one or two, but have you got any? 
So I've got a really nice announcement for our UK listeners, and that is the only thing we have. That Google testing program is launched for UK. So I don't see any comments because you're in the UK, and I don't know when they will launch in India, though. I'm quite happy about this. So, so if you want to join the trusted tester program, which is basically uh, not exclusively talk back all sorts of other Google software things, then uh, this is now open in the UK. What I will say is that weirdly, Google Forms seems to be broken at the minute, and um, you can't. All the edit fields seem to be disabled. It's not just on this form. It's on any Google form that gets created. So if you are doing it on a computer, you might have to uh, root your PC cursor and left-click it. If you're on the phone, on the Google testing form anyway, if you just hit next, it actually activates the edit field for you that you couldn't double tap on. Um, I don't know why Google Forms is broken, but it is. Um, but it's it's a great thing. Uh, we can now finally get access to uh, Talkback betas and other Google software. I think the Google Form is broken because it just heard the launching of the Frisher Prize event and it just broke. It just crashed. Yeah, that could be. But but it's been broken for about a week. Like other forms I've tried to fill in, they haven't worked. And uh, other other people have reported it. And also, um, Google has a uh, testing opportunity for any blind or low vision users in the U.S. or Canada, and it's taking place between October sixteenth and twentieth. And you will need to be able to join a meet call from two devices: one with a camera that you can point at your TV, and one that you can just have a regular meet call on. And it's a study for the YouTube living room experience. So you will also need to have obviously a YouTube account and have a YouTube app installed on your TV or streaming device connected to your TV. And of course they will pay you for your time. It's 100 US dollars or 125 Canadian. Nice, and, and the link will be in the show notes. This is Android Basics, in which we bring you up to date on the things that you should know to use your Android phone. And now we move to the Android Basics section, and we have a, a double or triple bill this week. We have um, some hardware to talk about and some software to talk about. We'll start, though, with the most applicable announcement, which might be the release of Android 14. And you might remember a couple of months ago, we, we had a, a poll about uh, when that would happen. And I think, Warren, am I not right, but the prize goes to Austin? Yeah, it goes to Austin without a doubt. Uh, we all failed it, and it's just, it's Google's fault. Uh, let's be clear on that. And yeah, frankly, I said it. I said it would be no problem. Yeah. <laughs> so I owe Austin a bottle of beer, just to be fair. To be fair, that is about the value of a Pixel phone, so uh, I'm glad you did that. Uh, uh, they are of equivalent worth, I think. Uh, so yeah, uh, Austin. He, he it yeah, seemed the so longest so, odds. It was. Yeah, there was so and, many betas, and I don't know what is the longest time ever. And talking about you know Android fourteen, frankly, there's nothing left that we haven't covered in all of the betas that we've talked about so far in the other episodes that we've had in the past. So if you want to know, just listen to any of those episodes that we've covered because there's really nothing new that was introduced because of the final release that took place on Wednesday when all the hardware was unveiled and all of that. So it's so odd to see that this is what happened, but at least we now have it. And if you have a Pixel device that qualifies, you shall be able to get that you know, OTA or just manually just go in there and, and tap on that check for updates and it should show up for you. If it's not showing up in the notification area that you have a system 
have been waiting for you. So on my 6A, I got the 1 GB update, but on the 7A, which was in the QPR uh, 1 data, I got a 140 MB update. So I don't know what is that for. So we're talking about QPR uh, beta 1. That's the quarterly platform release. So we're transitioning then to the QPR, which we talked about QPR 1 a little while ago. So it's interesting that the following day, which was Thursday, Google also rolled out QPR 1 beta 2. And that, you know, was just in the heels of the final release. And so things kind of took a little bit of a roundabout ways because usually we always had that final release first and then we start the uh, QPR. So I was thinking that I'm like, why in the world, Google, did you not just wait for the QPR and just roll it out on Thursday after you've rolled out the final um, release of or public release of Android 14? The whole thing is kind of interesting. But talking about that um, QPR 1 beta 2, there's a little reorganization that Google has done, and I want to grab my phone and show that because it's a little bit of a good a feature that we should have had for the longest time. But I like what Google has done here. So what happens is that when you go to your system settings, for example, and you go tap on system languages and all of that, now we have a new item here that says software updates or something like that. Let me show you what I'm backup. talking seven about. Of 11, date and time. GMT so we got dead and time. Backup. Backup. Seven of 11. Software updates. Keep your pixel up to date. Eight of 11. So we got something called software updates. When you go in here, I'll your show you what we got. Date. Navigate up. Button. Out of lip. Your pixel is up to date. Okay. Pixel updates. Up to date. Two of five. In list. So it will tell you what is up to date and what is not. So in other words, things like your Play Store, things like your apps and all of that, you can manage them directly from here and also system updates. So we got system update updated to October 5th, 2023, three of five. And if I move down app updates, check for updates. Five of five. So if you tap on that, it'll take you to all the apps that you have installed. And so you could just, uh, do your updates from there. And uh, uh, if there's anything that is not up to date, it has like a visual, like a little dashboard uh, that has, you know, if it's looking with all green and dots of greens around it, you're up to date. If there's a little bit of a red somewhere, it will let you know. Um, like when I was checking it on mine, it says I got two pending uh, updates or something like that. And uh, it will tell you which one has those updates, whether it's the Play Store or is the system update itself. And I really like the implementation. I know Samsung has something like that that is, uh, you know, software updates, but it's not quite the same. But I'm glad that we finally have something like this from where you could just manage all of those updates here instead of uh, going around. So does the app updates even include non-Google apps or only Google apps? Uh, so we are here. Why don't we tap on the app updates and see? You know what I mean? App updates. Check for updates. There five we go. Five. Google Play system update. Updated to August 1st, 2020. Okay, so I'm going to tap app on. Updates. Check for update. Play store. Manage apps and device. Manage apps and device. So Go it takes you to your apps where you could update See details. Your apps. Updates available. 13 updates pending and one install pending. So there we are. You know, I got a total of 13. Um, I mean, I did my updates a little while earlier today, but on average, I got about, I get typically about 30 something updates, a, you know, a day. So I got lots of uh, apps. So that's what that is. But yeah, so you could manage those right from here. And like I said, I really like this addition uh, to the system settings and making things easier. I was expecting that you would have 40 or 50 app updates available. Yeah, but I already did some updates earlier. These ones just came yeah. in like within the last hour. 
do you want to explain Warren how that interfaces with Android 14? Is that is that for people on Android 14 and the beta, or is this an Android 13 thing? This is only for Android 14 uh, QPR, and each QPR program dies once the uh, the uh, Android version has reached where the new one starts. So, for example, I think the last one for Android 13 died back in June. Wasn't it, John, you remember? Yeah, they the public facing name is feature drop so the pixel feature drop so the qpr1 will be december pixel feature drop for android 14 and then qpr2 will be uh, you know march and so on but then, well, what we're talking about now is the beta for the pix uh, for the feature drop isn't it yes exactly yeah. yes and you know if you don't want to be part of it you don't have to uh this is something that like john says takes place in December, but you can jump on it early, see what is coming to everyone in December. And that's what the beta is all about. And yeah. one does not necessarily need to be part of it, but uh, that's how it works. And the people who are part of it, so so if you signed up to the Android 14 beta, you are in that uh, quarterly platform release beta, aren't you? You don't, you don't do anything different. No, yeah. So if you... Uh, sign up to you have to sign up for that QPR program if you want to be part of it. If all you want is Android 14, then you don't uh, jump onto it. But if you like it, you do jump onto that beta. But if you just simply want to wait till it drops for everybody, then you wait till December. But but if you signed up to the Android 14 beta and developer previews, are you in the QPR beta or do you have to sign up again? Yes, Ed, the answer is yes. You, yes. It's different this time because Android came so late. Basically, you didn't have a chance to opt out. So if you were in the 14 beta, then you're, you're now in the QPR beta. Yeah, that, that, that's yeah. what I wanted to check. Yeah. But, but, yeah, uh, but I, as Warren think... says, it's closed, so, but you can sign up for the QPR, uh, the quarterly platform release betas, if you want to. Yes, you can sign up yeah. for it. And so, you yeah. see, that when we had that other episode where we talked about it, we told people to opt out, you know, by the 18th of, was that September, um, Austin? Yeah, I believe it was September. Yeah, we said, you know, if you don't want to be automatically rolled into the QPR program, then you needed to opt out of it. And so, but if you were part of the Google Android 14 beta, then you automatically are rolled into it. But if you, mm -hmm. you know, but if you opted out, then you are not, you have to go sign up for the uh, QPR program. For me, I automatically got rolled into it because I saw no need to uh, opt out of it. So my Pixel Seven Pro is perpetually on the beta. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. You're listening to the Blind Android Users Podcast. This is Android Basics, in which we bring you up to date on the things that you should know to use your Android phone. And now we're going to move on to talk about some hardware. And we'll first, I think, talk about the Samsung S23 Fan Edition, and we'll pass over to Sally. What do you have to say about this then, Sally? Uh, it's making a reappearance after a year off, is it? Yeah, it's after a year off. and. The thing is, I have this S21 FE, so probably I will be getting the S23 FE. But one thing holds me back is it doesn't support the eSIM protocol, and I wish it could, but unfortunately it doesn't have. So probably I will be uh, hesitating to get, should I get it or not. But what is good about this phone is it's um, getting with glass back because uh, S21 FE had a plastic back and it's an improvement of course. The, the another thing I should say if you want to get this device it's it will be released on October 26th and it will 
be shipped with Android 13 and it will be giving you four years of OS updates and five years of security patches. I wish it would come with Android 14 so they will be released a little later, but uh, unfortunately it comes with 13. So we are missing out just uh, with like narrowly, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a bit silly, given how close they are with the UI six and everything else. That it shouldn't, it shouldn't come with thirteen, should it? Yeah, like, they were just after. T- too quick to release the phone. And uh, normally, they released S twenty one FE on January. I think that was a great time if you want to release this phone for it in January, but they did it in October. No, but they've got they got UI six, Android fourteen's out. I mean, even if they do release it on October twenty sixth, like they need to. Well, they need to give October fourteen as like upgrade zero. So it, mm. it needs to be four past Android fourteen. I, I, I think I think that's a bit silly because it really is three years, isn't it? Yeah, so that um, makes it three year three updates. I, th- I it's, think it's three. Yeah, I, I, yeah you can't. I, I think I think if fourteen is out, and you yeah. have betas on your other devices, yeah, I think but look at re- that. releasing yeah. a phone mm-hmm. on the previous operating system, claiming you're giving four years of updates, is not right. Yeah. That's what I've always said that you know the Samsung updates, the four year updates, when you look at it technically, it's the same yeah, yeah. with where the Google mm-hmm. updates are. But frankly, the uh, S23 FE, though, I think, in my never to be humble opinion, sits right between the uh, regular Samsung S23 and the S23 Plus. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah somewhere absolutely. There. Because, yeah. <laughs> uh, and you know, price wise, I'm not sure. That thing is seven hundred dollars, isn't it? Six ninety nine, yeah. Uh, and and the regular Samsung S twenty three or the S plus sometimes it would go on sale, you know, right around that price. So it's kind of a tough deal to, uh, you know, buy it, and most especially if it's coming on uh, Snapdragon uh, Gen one as to the other ones are better uh, processors. So if I were in somebody's shoe, uh, for example. I will get the regular one on sale. Does it support memory card? Because I know the S20 FE did. I, I no, it if... doesn't. It, no. It, it doesn't. It just gives you uh, 256 gigs. And I think it's enough, though. Yeah, that's quite a respectable amount, yeah. actually. So how does yeah. it differ uh, from its um, S23 counterpart? I don't know why they took out the SD card, though. No. Um, doesn't the uh fe21 <laughs> no fe21 uh, also doesn't have sd card oh it, it doesn't end with f20 well i'll be okay yeah. yeah so how does it differ from its s23 like mainline siblings where are its compromises like i said you know it's uh, running an older uh processor as to what the regular s23 series has and so that's where some of the compromises are. Okay, there's the thing about the processor. If you're in the US, it comes with a smart jargon 18 plus one. And if you're living in the other areas of the world, it's giving you Exynos 2200. And what does the S23 that's... have, like the regular S23, in terms of Exynos? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the S23 in all regions have the Yeah, it comes with the, and the, the, the one. The one that I have is 21 FE with Exynos uh, 2100. And I can tell you is that comparing to the Smart Dragon one, it's giving you a little bit overheat, especially yeah. during your charging period. So, But um, but the S23 in Europe doesn't come with Snapdragon, does it? It comes with Exynos, no? No, it comes with a Smart no, no, Dragon. They, they all come with SNP, yeah, yeah. that's what I said. All, yeah, yeah, yeah. all of yeah. the S23 series, regardless yeah. of where you okay. live, yeah, this yeah. year is Snapdragon, ah. uh, but the uh, the fan edition, the FE that we're talking yeah, about, for some reason, with the, the US is Snapdragon it, and yeah. something gives so X it, in it somewhere else. It was the same for S20, S20 FE, 21 FE, and now uh, 23 FE. Like, I'm um, in Turkey, so if I want to get the Smart Turkey version, I cannot do that. It's just silly, though. Yeah, like the S20, S20, S21, S22 in the UK, they haven't come with Snapdragon, they come with Exynos. So uh, it's why I didn't buy them. Uh, it's interesting yeah. that the S23 does. Um, 
So this is one another thing that holds me back, not buying this phone. Maybe wait for S24. But let's see. Maybe yeah. I will come up with like following you getting a Xiaomi. Who knows? Ed? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I think I just realized <laughs> that maybe they did not skip the S22 FE. Maybe this is. They just renamed yeah. it because it, it's yeah. only going to get, uh, you know, four years of updates from basically next month. It'll be down to three. Yeah, and then it has. Four, it's just three. Yeah, so it has that's, what last I mean. year's that's what I mean. That's what I mean. If this ca came out last it's, year, it's you would S3 still S3. get the same amount of updates and you would have yeah. gotten last year's processor in it as well. So it's... maybe they just delayed it and renamed it. <laughs> they don't it's right. It's the S22 FE. Yeah, that's it. It's it so nothing to say. Because you can't. You can't release the phone in 2022, in 2023, I mean, and call it 22. After, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, but they did right. last, last year, they did. Or was it, when did we have the FE21? Was it not last year or was it? It's in January uh, 22. Exactly. Yeah. That's a, that was a good time, though, because, like, in that was like, it, it shifted with Android 12. And uh, it was the time that 12 was released. And that, yeah, but. It was, yeah. You notice, though, that the F20 FE uh, yeah. was released in the summer. I think it was June Oof. or July. <laughs> yeah, so that was appropriate. The uh, mothership was released uh, in January, and in the summer, we had the fan edition, and Samsung yeah. did not keep to that schedule. And that's why we're having these, you know, yesterday's wine coming out of nowhere. <laughs> You know what the funny thing was? S21 FE was released in January, and only two months later, they released S22. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Stupid, if you ask and me. Just one month later, they released the A series, 32, 33, and oh. uh, 53, and 73. I mean, they, they've always like almost cannibalized their own line, though, haven't they? they they've always yeah. wanted to do that and have different... I things. think the, like, uh, like, who is in charge of this smartphone business was say, let's release this one. Just, I, I just want this way. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and they have, they have different series. They have different narratives for those series. I mean, they're not... Like, mm. most smartphone manufacturers don't do that. They have uh, one or two lines, don't they? But but Samsung deliberately don't. And they right, always at this, uh, the S series, M, A, F, M, whatever. You... Yeah, exactly. But um, it's, it's what Samsung do, and uh, mm. uh, for whatever reason. This is Android Basics, in which we bring you up to date on the things that you should know to use your Android phone. And now I suppose we should turn ourselves to some other phone announcements this week. And I believe Google has pretended that it can make phones too. Uh, I am probably not the person to lead a discussion on the Pixel 8 or the Pixel it's 8 so Pro. It's it, isn't it, sir? Thank you for it listening. <laughs> <laughs> What's really funny, and I love this, is yeah. the Pixel 8. And someone posted on the email list that Pixel 8 sounded like the display wouldn't be very good. And I replied and said, well, it gives you a clue for the sort of hardware you're going to get. Not that there's anything wrong with the Pixel 8 screen, by the way. I just thought it was very funny. And it teed up a joke I could make. But for people who are going to do a slightly uh, fairer job, on the Pixel 8 and the Pixel 8 Pro. Uh, I guess that's Warren and John, because they might well both have bought some. And I'm going to hand to Warren, first of all. What have we got, Warren, with these two devices? I'm excited for what we have coming up in the way of the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro. Now, of course, I'm a shameless fanboy, no question asked. Um, I really am. And I'm excited about it because for the first time, I think Google has kind of made a clear distinction between uh, the Pro and the non-Pro version. And of course, you know me, I always go for the gusto. And <laughs> so that's what I did. So John and I are going to be having something for you guys. We love doing those dual unboxings. So John and I, I don't know who's going to get it first, but usually John happens to get it first. And so we'll do that dual unboxing and we may even do a dual review together like we did with the folds now what i like though is the fact that the um 
the the regular Pixel 8 is something that some people want is smaller, even though it's just like an inch or point one inch uh, smaller than last year's uh, Pixel 7. You got a 6.2 as to 6.3 of last year. That might be the sweet spot for a lot of people that like smaller phones, for example. So I'm glad to see that Google has taken that um, route to kind of make it smaller. The only problem is that it's not having the same uh, components. I mean, and when I say components, I mean, the components are basically the same. I mean, like the processor and all of that, all running on that. They all have the same tensor chip, you know, Gen 3. And so uh, basically the processor is the same thing. The only thing that's so clear, of course, is the camera, which has always been, uh, but then uh, even the software is a little bit different than some of the uh, powerful AI stuff uh, only found on the Pro. And also the uh, temperature thing, which to me, I I don't know what that is for because Three years yeah, late. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> thank you very much. And I'm like, what's the point? <laughs> you are charging us. It was sold on phones in co- the year of COVID, but. I don't think anybody exactly. cares about their temperature these days. And I don't think it's really, you know, it's not even been FDA approved. So it could be something that is just taking space on there and it's not going to be of any particular use necessarily. It reminds me of the Soli found on the uh, Pixel 4 series, you know. So I don't know, John, I'm a little bit uh, skeptical about it, but it's there if you want it, if you have the pro. Uh, but I don't know that it's going to be of any use necessarily. I may be wrong. Yeah, and the one other thing I think that di- differenti- differentiates them is the RAM. So you're going to get 8 gigabytes of RAM in the Pixel 8 and 12 in the Pixel 8 Pro. And how does the software vary aside from the temperature sensors? Like, what is the AI difference? So there's also something called the Actua, you know, uh, screen. So they both, the the Actua on the 8 and the Super Actua on the uh, 8 Pro. Now, the software, however, you have some AI stuff that the 8 Pro will have that the regular 8 will not have. But I think it will get trickled to it. Google is good at doing things of this nature. But I think that the 12 gigs of RAM and 8 gigs of RAM, in my never to be humble opinion, is kind of gotten old. And another thing that I don't like is the fact that on all, they are using the UFS uh, 3.1 and not 4.0 for some reason. It's, it's just odd. I don't know why that is. And I think that's the reason why Google still has the 128 gigs because if they had 4.0, there would have been no uh, uh, 128 because 4.0, UFS 4.0 will not support 128 gigs. And I think it's worth mentioning that they, they have raised the price of both phones by $100. So the Pixel 8 is now 700 instead of 600 and the Pro is now 1000 instead of 900 which I would be okay with if they would start them at 256 gigabytes storage, but they're still starting them at 128, which I think is a little bit ridiculous, especially on the pro, you know, you're, they're selling a thousand dollar phone with only 128 gigabytes of storage. And I don't think that's very nice. The, the temperature sensor then is, is this for taking your body temperature or is it for like just, your surrounding temperature because i'd have thought uh, if you wanted to take your body temperature i'd have thought it would be better to have a sensor on the watch than than a phone myself or do you point the phone at yourself or what do we know you, uh, you don't officially point it at yourself because they don't have fda approval so they they're not they're telling you don't measure yourself but that's their goal and don't measure yourself but here's a thermometer yeah exactly <laughs> They're trying not yeah, to. Yeah, but the, the thermometer is supposed yeah. to be something you could use for other things. For example, when they give an example of that baby bottle, for example, you want to know if that if it's too hot to give to your baby. But frankly, 
I would hold if I hold the bottle in my hand, I'll determine i uh, determine as to whether you, you or know, not this wouldn't is you? Hard enough. Yeah. yeah, but but yeah. so the whole idea you could check temperatures of other things as well. But like I said earlier, frankly, I don't know. You, you're charging us for a hundred bucks that we shouldn't be charged for, but what can we say? It'd be kind of cool if you wanted that phone anyway. I wouldn't buy a phone for it, but it'd be kind of cool to be able to check what the temperature is when if you're in the garden or so things like that might be kind of cool. But or can can you do that as well? Or is it just but, I, th- I think devices can do that already, thing. can't they? Pardon? Plenty of devices do that already, don't they? Do they? They'll, yeah, they'll tell you from the internet, but they won't take the temperature, like, in your garden or something, would they? You'd have to buy something separate to do that. Like, if I look on my Samsung watch what the temperature is, it hasn't got a thermometer in it. It's just telling me from the weather uh on the internet it's not an actual thermometer samsung watches and the apple watches they all have that uh temperature thing but like i said you know all that thing is not no one would bank on it and for example no. if we take samsung uh, watch for example you cannot natively get that temperature you have to get a different app for that so the whole idea i don't think that we quite are there or we don't have the whereabouts of getting this thing accurately. So I don't think yeah, anyone's banking on this thing quite yet. Early, but like early John stages. Says, yeah. Like John says, you know, a thousand dollars. There's no way under yeah. heaven that I'll buy a 128 gigs phone for a thousand bucks. It's not going to happen here. So what's I would the rather... biggest storage? <laughs> what's the largest storage and how much are they charging this, for that? Uh, one TV. And, and yes. how much are they charging for that yes, one? Uh, 1400 And for me, because like I would rather get that than pay twelve about 1200 for 512 when for another additional 120 bucks you get the uh, the one TV. Yeah, yeah, per gigabyte, that's much better value, isn't it? If you've got that much money, that's that is better value. But of course a lot of people, you know, don't <laughs> And I suppose that's where multi yeah, no, contract plans come I in. Understand, and understand, but if if you are already paying almost twelve hundred for five yeah. uh, uh, twelve, or you're paying a um, thousand for one twenty eight, why not throw in sixty bucks and get a two fifty six instead? That's more of yeah, a exactly. useful thing yeah. for your money. That's yeah. the silly yeah. thing because it's so it's nine ninety nine for the one twenty eight gigabyte version, and then it's ten fifty nine for the. 256 gigabyte yeah. version so you're already spending a thousand dollars and i'm like that's the one i got is the 256 i'm like yeah i'll pay 60 dollars to double my storage if i'm already but, paying a thousand it, it, it's not the one you got originally is it john let's just be fair about this yeah i i pulled the trigger let's let let john tell his story <laughs> so yeah, just, he just I, I had to beat him on the head <laughs> <laughs> I know. So let, let's let him not overclaim. Let, let's pull him back to see what he has. Hey, I, I can admit when I make made a mistake, I, I made a mistake. Well, I, I, the, I, I called you out, and now you're going to tell your story. gigabyte version. Yeah, I was. It didn't have to be mentioned, you know. But I'm not going to deny <laughs> it. So, <laughs> so I can't, yeah, I, why are you why are you doing this to John? That's not very nice. I, well, well, he no, said he said he could admit when he made the mistake, and he didn't. He didn't admit it. I I, I told everybody he made the mistake. You don't have to tell everyone when someone makes a mistake. That's Maybe he said nice. he can admit it, and he, he didn't okay. admit it. Maybe somebody will learn from my mistake. <laughs> don't if if you're buying this phone outright, do not. It's silly to, exactly. to get the one thousand dollar version now obviously if you're getting it through a carrier that's the only thing they're going to offer you and you know but yeah if you're buying it outright you know pay the extra 60 dollars. you're going to already be paying more than that in sales tax so you know double your storage <laughs> you'll thank yourself later i wonder yeah. if um the 128 gig ones will end up i mean these are launch prices and they do always go down eventually don't they so i wonder if the 128 gig ones will end up being like loads cheaper because everyone will have noticed what you've noticed and gone i don't want that and so they'll just end up selling off cheap i don't know yeah i think i don't think that's going to happen because most people do get still in the us at least get their phones through the carriers and the carriers just give you the cheapest version and oh really they won't offer you different ones they will but like the promos were like get this phone on us supposedly you know where they give you a free phone but you're paying it for three years um 
Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, UK carry is dissimilar. Like, it, it's normally the lower end. I'm not saying you can't order a different one and, you, and you'll pay more on a tariff but it, but it's very similar like if you go into a shop and go uh i'll take a phone out on a tariff you'll get the lower storage phone Unless no you... you're, you're right because i i ended up doing that with my samsung s22 the amount they wanted per month if i had a higher storage to me wasn't worth that much for the because i've still got my other phone as well so yeah and they probably just... didn't have it in the shop anyway, so you had to. Order oh no, it and... I rang them up. I was on the. Fa- I rang them. I couldn't oh, okay. go to the shop. I rang yeah. them up, and they they sent it to my house. I didn't even have to leave the house. Nice. Um, but I did only get a hundred and twenty eight gig um, yeah. phone, which is a bit annoying um, when they don't let you have a memory card. But I've still got my old, lovely, old now, but S twenty Galaxy S twenty FE with FE? its yeah. With its 512 uh, gig memory card that I bought, um, it, it is a shame, isn't it, that they can't spell fee correctly? You know, somebody <laughs> going to tell them fee is spelled F I. Come on, stop this. Yeah, indeed. But at least you have Y named that. after you. Why? Oh, there you go. <laughs> they named Y after you. They Which... named it after you. So you should be Y hyphen. What is your what's your internet? Oh, Wi Fi, Wi Fi, yeah, yeah Wi Fi, yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, so I, I, th- I can't have it all, can I? No, no, exactly. Let's so, there's a big question, the isn't there, to ask part. about the eight? That, that I, I've got an important part question about the eight, and it is uh, I'll pass to Warren. What, what software updates do we get? We saw rumors, didn't we, about what we'd get? What does it come with? And that's what I was also uh, starting to say. That's the most important oh, thing, the biggest. <laughs> yeah. So that's the biggest part of it. You know, we've given Google uh, grief enough. And I had, remember, I said the gatekeeper of Android was Samsung. So now Google has retaken its proper place, taken the crown back, so to speak, because frankly, no one can even touch that. Seven years of OS update. I almost fell out of my chair when I yeah, heard that. I'm like, I'm like, nah, you didn't say that. And they repeated it. And yeah. I'm like, there. <laughs> you know? Guys, I want to put this in perspective. Seven years means not only will this Pixel 8 be getting Android 21, but if the original Pixel had seven years of updates, it would be it would have Android 14 right now. Like, that's... <laughs> That's how long seven years is in technology years. That is a long time. That is it's seven years time. somewhere I... between six years and eight years. Exactly. But you know, but, but see, this is what excites me about it. This move is going to force other manufacturers to up the number of years that they have. Because if you're going to sell your phones, I'm not going to buy you a stupid puny phone that's it's going to have only like two years of updates and then it dies on the vine. So I think this is a good thing across the board as it's going to be something that most uh, manufacturers would jump on. It wouldn't surprise me if Samsung comes in when they roll out Android 14 and say, hey, you know, our next phones are going to have seven years or eight years of OS updates. You know, So it's a good thing across the board and your resale value would be better than what it has been in the past. So I like what I'm hearing. And, and I'm very naughty about Pixel phones, and I know this, but seven years of OS updates is absolutely huge. That's a massive thing. Uh, iOS has five. Uh, uh, the best on Android previously was four. Um, it's a, it is a massive thing, is seven years of OS updates. What this also means is that there's no need for something called a custom ROM. I, I, I wouldn't put a custom ROM you know, on my phone, knowing I have a seven-year support from the manufacturer and all of that. So this is a good thing. And the custom roamers could, you know, uh, focus on, you know, all the devices like they always have. And we have a great thing here going on in Android land because now you got uh, the most modern phones will give you a lot of years of support. And then the older ones are being supported by custom ROM developers. So when you look at it, Android is just the place to be. It, of course, yeah. that's my never-to-be-humble opinion. I mean, the other reason to put a custom ROM on is obviously not necessarily to 
to, to maintain a phone uh, in modernity, but it's to give it other features. So if you had, I don't know, an LG or something, and you wanted it to have a pixel-looking custom ROM, you might do that. You might root it, uh, say, to, to enable other things. That's not ROMing, obviously, that's different. But, you, you yeah, we, well, as Warren says, with seven years of OS updates, you don't need to custom ROM it purely to keep it up to date. You might custom ROM for other reasons, but not for that. Exactly. And so we are in good hands, whichever way you look at it, both from the custom ROM and also from Google. And I believe something tells me other manufacturers are going to follow suit, at least maybe up to that by a year or two to at least five years. And I wish, though, that Google could retro, for example, the Pixel 7 and Pixel 6 series to at least Five years. Anyone remember the first generation Pixel that was supposed to end at, you know, Android 9, which is the Pi? And we were surprised when Google gave it Android 10. So I was hoping that, you know, something could happen like this to both the Pixel 7 and yeah, 6 series. And, and especially the Fold, because if you just spent $2,000 on the Fold and you've already used one of your updates, you only have two left. Exactly. And that's a very expensive phone. Uh, so definitely something tells me, though, that Google will need to up this or they may up the years of the fold and maybe the seven, at least the fold, since it just hashtag, came out a little while ago. Hashtag serves you right. Hashtag serves you right. Serves me right, you don't Hashtag they be a, <laughs> don't be a knucklehead. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I gave mine to... Uh, my stepdaughter, she's into hashtag uh, you didn't need it, hashtag <laughs> it's a gimmick, hashtag get what you deserve. Uh, well, well, I but... wonder though, I wonder about, I wonder about seven years of um software updates though, because however great that sounds, in four, five, six years' time, will they actually really be any good? Because if if the newer versions of Android are built for phones with more RAM, um, more you know faster processors, etc., if you're then able to put them on older phones, which are the new ones now, but in a few years' time they'll be old, might might there not be a danger that they end up limping along a little bit, and it, it just it, it could sort of ruin the Android experience a little bit when they get old. And that's a that's a possibility, but the thing is, people can't use that as an excuse now. <laughs> if they get no. if, now, they'll have to get the update and be like, "Man, this is slow," and then buy yeah. a new phone rather than not ever buy the phone because they're worried about it not being supported for a long time. So I mean, but I just wonder if that will be used as a reason for some unscrupulous people to sell people older phones, which already happens, especially with Android. Uh, and say, oh, you'll get updates for the next, but they're already starting off with a slower phone. I think we just have to be, I just sometimes wonder if some of these things are as good as they sound. I'm not. I don't know. Is that any different to an iOS phone being sold after three years with two more updates left? I don't I think it is really, is it? Like, you know no, how old the phone not. is. For the buyer, and besides, you know, if we talk about yeah. If we're talking about, you know, uh, whatever, whether it's uh, going to be compatible with new OS, there are phones out there that have two gigs and are running Android 14, so, or I mean Android 13, so what's the difference? The whole idea <laughs> is that you, you have OS support and security yeah. support, because that's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah, I don't want to have a phone yeah. that is out of status and you mm. know it's, it's a target for malware and all of that so this yeah. is not it's a non issue it's a very good thing to have oh, and don't also, get me wrong. I'm, I'm not saying it. i'm not saying it's a bad thing but i just wonder especially for us as talkback users because we often yeah, suffer that's, that's first saying, and it happens with voiceover as well you know we that, have phones running with two gigs of RAM and you yeah. run talk back on it with Android 13. No problem. Yeah. Uh, so we've gone past those years where um, mm. we'll have a concern that, hey, you know, uh, this is a mid-range phone. It's not going to work well or, you know, because it has less uh, resources and all of that. Those things are in the past. 
Yeah. Well, I just want to if make- if I'm proved right in a few years' time, I shall remember what you just said. <laughs> but the other the other thing is, I that, hope I'm not. I hope I'm not. The other thing as well, like the phone will have a number, so it'll be pixel pixel eight. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I love that. But yeah, Pixel 8. And if uh, someone's selling that when the Pixel 12 is out and saying, you know, this phone has three years of OS updates, everyone knows it'll be four years behind the time. And you'll go, do I want that phone four years behind the time, even though it's got three years of OS updates? Or do I want a newer phone? that will get seven more years. Yeah, the number will give you a clear as well. Yeah. And the other thing that people are mentioning, which I think is kind of silly, is that is battery. You know, they say no battery will last seven years. And, you know, that's true. But, you know, if you want to get a new battery, you can. You can order a kit to repair it yourself online, or you could take it to a location with official like Google parts and get them to replace the battery for you if you need to after two or three years, you know, and that's cheaper. Than buying a new phone if you want to do it. So mm-hmm. I, I have noticed people bring up the battery. Also, it's like, guys, this is a good thing. <laughs> like, stop thinking of all the reasons why it won't work. Like, no one has removable batteries these days. You know, it is what it is. And and besides, you know, to be honest, like you said, John, is it easy or is it cheaper for me to get a new phone or cheaper for me to have a battery replaced for a hundred bucks or fifty bucks or seventy bucks, whatever the, the case may be? And besides, the battery longevity depends on how you use it. I still have Nexus 6 from 2014. I put that thing on the charge, it lasts like two hours, three hours. And that's from 2014. How many years ago? That's almost 10 years ago. So it all depends on how you abuse your battery and all of that. But the most important thing is that I would rather replace the battery than go spend another 1500 bucks to buy a phone that's silly. Yeah, and, and it's the same. I mean, people have do, been doing that with iPhones for ages, keeping them going by getting a new battery, you know. So it's it's not that big of a deal, really, is it? Having to get an, it's a bit annoying, but it's not as annoying as having, like you say, to spend fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars for a new phone. It's much cheaper. And yeah. a lot of normal people don't like the idea of. I mean, I don't understand it. I don't get it. But a lot of normal people don't like the idea of getting a new phone and having to learn something new or having to transfer their data. Like it stresses them out. <laughs> like so, if I they're normal, they John, if they're normal, yeah. what are you? Are you a, a, are you a phone addict? Do you need to sure. go to a? Do you need help? Do you need to go to a group? Well, John is John is definitely a phone addict. I thought we were yeah. this. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not normal. That's what I am. Another thing, though, that we probably didn't talk about, but probably is worth the mention, is the watch. The watch two, and. Um, Frankly, the one thing... It's probably rubbish, is it? it, Well, forget about... No, it's better than what it was last year because at least it's going to be running, uh, you know, SND W5. No, it's not (laughs) rubbish. Uh, Stop the rubbish. Well, it's rubbish in a sense. I agree with you. And here's where my... Yeah, exactly. It's rubbish, isn't it? Here's where my rubbish comes in. It's still the same God for a second awful size. I hate it. I really hate it with a passion. Um, But of course, yeah. Uh, Why would I be walking around with some little girly looking thing, you know, on my wrist? You know, uh, so of course you get it, uh, at least here in the US, you you can get that with uh, your phone of the the purchase of the uh, Pixel 8. Uh, Was it also, was it just the Pro or even the regular Pixel 8, John? Uh, Yeah, if you pre-order the Pro, you get the watch for free. If you pre-order the regular Pixel 8, you get the Pixel Buds for free. Okay, okay. Pixel Buds Pro, yeah. So what's the size of the watch then, Warren? It's a 40 millimeter um, it's a very puny thing. Uh, Uh, It'd be perfect for me. (laughs) Yeah, it would be. Exactly my point. (laughs) If I didn't already have a Samsung watch that I like. And so here's what happened. So I got the uh, the LTE because for me, I don't want to be tethering, you know, something tethered to my phone. If I'm going to wear my watch, 
my damn phone is going to be at home. So I got the LTE again. Um, of course, it cost me 50 bucks for that because the uh, the offer is not for the LTE, it's for the regular one, but 349 And so I just paid the difference. But then you have to have um, an extra line or extra service on your line because of the no, watch, you, don't no, you? No, 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 you don't. It depends on your carrier. Carrier. Yeah. So, oh, you do. Warren, you do you're on, here. You're on Google Fi, right? Yeah, yeah Fi is one of the only carrier, yeah. carriers that lets you have a watch for free. Most other ones will, at least in the U.S., most other ones will char- charge you like an extra five dollars a month uh, to I just have a watch. Vodafone from... told me I could have a watch for th- an extra three pound fifty a month or something, but I just got a Wi-Fi one. I couldn't. I thought they yeah, were getting I, enough of my money already. So this is what Ed and I have been talking about and kind of a little bit actually pissed off about is that mm. frankly there's no need to charge you for extra. You still your same God for a second. Same plan. phone number. Exactly. Yeah, I know. It's a bit rude, isn't it? Charging extra. Um yeah. But so this eight and eight pro then, apart from the temperature thing. What else is it? Is it just faster and and slicker? Because it strikes me that quite a lot of these phones now that come out, um, like they don't really do anything different anymore, and it's all a bit boring. <laughs> so, and and this applies to um, iPhones as well. I think really they just. Am I being fair? Well, it is. Yeah, it they're is, not going to cook breakfast for you. Thank you I mean, very much. No, oh, no that's disappointing. Breaking. I really Pretty wanted bad. a phone that could make my coffee. Yeah, so no, you have to wait 10 years down the line. See, if you're going to be that lazy and want a phone to make your coffee for you in the morning, I'll give you another yeah. 10. It should be there. But frankly, like you said, there's nothing really new that, um, you know, we haven't seen. You know, they still all make the phone calls, all still send out text messages, whatever, browse the internet, whatever it is that we do with our phone. So nothing new here to write home about, but it's always there's something there that they convince us. Uh, people like John and I, uh, we take that bait every time. Um, you, you know, do. You really great. do. Yeah. So, so this time, as well as the temperature sensor, were there any other new things? A lot of AI is going on. This is the very first phone in any history that uh, comes with AI, you know, right off the, the bat. And so, which AI is that, and what will it do for you? So, they usually what they do is introduce new features, and they say it's because of the on-device AI or machine learning type stuff that they can do these things. Whether that's true or not, I don't know, because sometimes they roll out to older pixels eventually, but it's things like, I'll I'll tell you my favorite that they um, demonstrated is something called audio magic eraser. So the pixels had this feature called magic eraser, which we as blind people don't really care about. But what it was is if you take a picture and there's something in the picture you want to remove, like, you know, a, a bird flew by or something, you can just remove it and it'll try to fill in the background the best it can to make it look like that bird was never there. But now they're introducing something called audio magic eraser. And what this is, is if you record a video, it uses AI to automatically separate that into different audio channels based on different sounds. So the example they used, they had a baby that was talking to the camera and there was a dog barking in the background and it automatically separated those into different audio uh, channels. And then you could completely remove the dog barking. And when they played it back, it sounded like there was never a dog there. And, you know, it didn't leave like an empty silence when the dog had barked. It filled it in with like white noise using AI that was already there to just make it seem like it it never happened. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, and the reason that I love this is because so, and it, so there might be some other blind people that can relate. My wife is always taking photos or videos of my son doing cute things. And I don't realize she's recording. <laughs> and I'll say, I'll say some comment that shouldn't be in a video. <laughs> and, and, and then she'll, and she'll be like, well, so much for that would, video. I was going to post that on Facebook. <laughs> so exactly. This, so this, like, to be able to remove like my comments from a video that could have been a perfect video, like, 
that's a cool feature. Sighted people should tell you in their videoing. If we've got any sighted people listening, which probably isn't very likely, but if we have, guys, just let us know when you're filming, would you, please? Yeah, yeah exactly. And she's she does a pretty good job of it, but sometimes she forgets, and that's always the time that I have something to say. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is that, though, you know, some things come up instantaneously. It's part of the moment. Kid is doing something. You need to capture that moment as soon as you can. You know what I mean? So it's yeah, something exactly. that you are not prepping for, but it just happened and boom, you want to capture that. So I can see how that is. I have kids. And so, you know, I can relate to that. We, we do a lot of things like that. So it, your wife is doing what a parent would do at that moment. You want to capture that moment. But, you know, those AIs, and it's going to be the assistant is gotten better, you know, with BARD. You know, you don't have to do anything. Go to the side to interact with BARD. It's going to be right there. I can't wait for this baby, just simply put. All good things must end, thus it's curtain drawing time, bringing us to the close of this week's episode. Coming up though, we give you information on how to get hold of us. Well, that's it. For this week, folks, Austin, how can people get in touch with us? To contact us, you can send an email to contact us at blindandroidusers.com. You can join a mailing list by sending an email to blindandroidusers plus subscribe at groups.io. You can join our Telegram, Facebook, Discord, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. The links for everything will be at the bottom of the show notes and also in the video description of the YouTube channel. And also the links are in the websites panel of the YouTube channels. Thank you, Austin. Say bye-bye to the nice listeners, everybody. Bye, everyone, and thank you so much for listening to us. Looking forward to seeing you next week. Bye, everyone. Have a good one. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Blind Android Users Podcast. Until we see you next week, don't forget to leave us your comments and suggestions via our email contact or using any of our social media sites. Have a great week.